Hello and welcome back to another Sunday which means another World Beyond review so today we'll be reviewing The Walking Dead World Beyond Season 2 Episode 7 Blood and Lies and this episode has a very strong starter they don't normally have strong starters World Beyond but this episode is really good with a starter like we pick up with Leo Bennett's girlfriend, never gonna learn her name, and we learn a lot about the green vial that we saw last episode. And throughout this whole episode, is very heavy on the what the serum are, what the green vial is, what's happening, what their plan is. And it might be a lot of exposition, but it works. I quite like it because we basically just been theorizing and guessing what's been happening through the pe previous six episodes, just to now just get all the information. I feel like we have all the information now, and we get like. Everything we need to know what is that is going on and how villainous the CRM are now. And I quite like that. We get a lot of CRM stuff this episode. That is good because this is meant to be a CRM show and the previous 16 episodes of season 1 and season 2 have been very light on the CRM stuff and this is probably the heaviest CRM dump we have gotten so far and probably the most we'll get because there's only three episodes less and I don't think they'll do any more dumping of CRM so it's really good we got knowledge in a show about all CRM and we lacked it before but the plot of this episode is quite good like it has a few side stories which are very 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 bad but the main plot is to do with the adult characters not the children the main plot is to have Jadis and she's a big part of this episode I know last episode she was literally at the start and the end and that was it and it was quite disappointing but this episode she kind of hops around and she's doing this investigation to find out where the screen vial went the one that Felix stole last episode and she's bringing Huck along and Huck has to like play the role and be like okay I'll figure it out for you and they suspect Leo and the whole episode is them kind of trying to find out what happened and then interrogating Leo. This episode is very entertaining just because how much Jadis is in it. Like, she has a big part of this episode. The whole episode revolves around her kind of Sherlocking it out and figuring out what's happening. And that's kind of the episode, just her figuring it out. And then we have the side stories, which are really bad because we have Hope and Iris kind of doing their thing, just kind of hiding. And Iris is even worse. Like, she's getting worse and worse each episode. And she got she's so bad, this episode. It's so bad. She is unbearable this episode she gives off that what are you gonna do it and she's like so stubborn and when like leo's girlfriend's like okay we need to do this while your dad dies she's like oh i don't care if you don't give into it we can't trust her and that's when you're like you seem like a spoiled little shit okay iris come on read the room your sister can and it's so annoying iris is so bad she made xylus's plot in this episode look good and his plot was based on it was just in the episode to interact with Jadis I quite like their interaction it was a weird interaction because Jadis was just talking about his feet and I was like what what the hell I didn't want to have a watch a show about someone talking about feet but other than that he was actually okay like he somehow got slightly better in the acting and I was like okay there he was fine and then Iris was just unbearable Another issue with this episode is the pace and it's not very good. Like it's very strong when it's with Jadis and with all the like adult actors because they can carry it and they can move forwards the drama. But then it kind of goes over and it feels like the story comes to a halt when it tries to focus on Xylus on maybe the one or two times it does. And Hope and Iris in the lab kind of just hiding from CRM soldiers. I feel like we didn't need to do that. We would have benefited with more maybe... Jadis looking around, more Leo being interrogated, maybe more Felix, because he literally is at the start of this episode and he dips out, and you're like, okay, well, there's Felix. It happens with um, Percy as well. I'm not too worried about Percy. He kinda, he's at the start of the episode, and then you forget about him, and then right at the end of the episode, he peers up, and you're like, oh, yes, I forgot he was going to do this. Maybe they could have done something there. I was more interested in that than the Hope and Iris thing, and it's just like, you have the main story, which is good, has a good pacing progressing in the story the plots moving forwards and then it just moves to iris and hope and you're like okay well now i feel like i've just dug my heels in the sand and buried my head it's just that bad and that also it helped with the bad pacing of this episode then plot a with jadis like she finds out who it is and then she goes and does something and it's very cool like you see how villainous she is we see that jadis is not being a double agent like people think jadis is an actual full-blown villain and she believes in the serum it's just something quite evil and it's like so messed up and i really like how they did it. it's like <gasps> what and it was quite cool to see this stuff happen in the show because nothing's happened like this before and you're like yay they're finally doing stuff that the walking dead's known for and then the episode doesn't end because you feel like oh it's the end of the episode and then it carries on. And you're like, wait, 
it's going on and they're like okay it makes sense because Percy gets picked up again and we learn more stuff about the CRM but they had to mix that in with how we pad the runtime with romances yeah let's give hope and that other guy a romance scene how about we focus on Iris and Percy laying in the bed like just talking and then making out yeah that sounds like fun no it was just kind of cringy and boring because I didn't care about them I cared about the Jada stuff and the episode just felt like it dragged on quite a bit after Jadis had a last scene about maybe eight minutes before the end of the credits and you're like okay we could have cut this episode down quite a bit by removing the last bit and I feel like the pacing was ruined by that. I do want to talk about how The Walking Dead World Beyond so far at this point up to this point has been really good at showing the walkers differently and it shows a different part of the world like the show sucks but it's cool to see a different part of the world like Fear and The Walking Dead they're to do with a lot with the walkers and people fighting them and then they get walkers and stuff like that. But in World Beyond, especially in this episode and this season, there's very little walkers and it's more about the CRM and walkers are just kind of in the episode. There's no walker death this episode. I don't know why, I just quite like how it feels very different to the other shows. Even though the show sucks, it feels very different to the other shows. Uh, Fear used to have the issue as it felt like basically just a, a clone or a sister show of The Walking Dead. It did feel like it has an identity to it did walkers with nukes. But World Beyond has always had its different identity. I quite like how it's to focus on the CRM. It's getting more into the CRM. And we are looking at potential cures for the walkers and stuff like that. And we're looking at things we've never looked at before in the universe. And that is a win because we do a lot of that in this episode. And that is a win. Now let's move on to my one word slash one sentence over review and when this episode ended it had a lot of issues with the pacing, the acting, especially with virus. The stories were sometimes good, sometimes bad. This is a watchable episode. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just watchable. It's crucial if you want to understand the last three episodes of The World Beyond. You have to watch this episode. It's a have to watch just so you understand what's happening. It's watchable. I would only recommend watching it if you want to watch the final three episodes. If you're just passing by, you, you don't watch it. Don't even watch the show at this point. It's a watchable episode. But what do you think about this episode? Please tell me down below. Did you like the episode? Did you not like the episode? Which characters is your favourite in this episode? Mine was Jadis and then it was Leo's girlfriend. But if you want more content, look on the screen. There's more videos. There's a review somewhere and there's probably a recommended list somewhere there. I recommend you go click on them. You'll definitely find something else you like. So goodbye, peace out, and I'll see you tomorrow.